Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 1 and we are looking at the next topic that is 1.7 test execution. We already know from the point of test execution that it is all about executing the test cases and making sure that the tests are passing and also making sure that the uh, application what we have built is meeting the expected requirements or not. So when it comes to execution it is the most critical part of the entire test process where generally the testers as well as the test analyst including the test manager becomes uh, very active uh, to monitor, track, uh, decide on the necessary support, making sure that the test cases what are written so far are enough to achieve that coverage. Consistent monitoring can also tell you if there are any additional test cases required to uh, support any more coverage or add on to the execution part. So at this point of time, the test analyst generally plays a critical role where the test analyst determines that how the test execution is going on, whether it is smooth or there are some kind of barriers or any kind of showstoppers which are appearing and making sure that you know all are you know fulfilled or one other the way resolved so that there are no such stoppers in between so that the process can go ahead continuously. At this point of time, the very first thing what we want to bring to your highlight is determining and meeting the entry criteria from the previous stage that is test implementation and making sure that everything is well equipped to move into the execution. That's the first and foremost thing what a test analyst must check and then let the people get into the test execution or kick off with the execution part. During the execution, uh, the test analyst needs to make sure that the test suites are available and the test suites are executed in the order determined. The prioritization or the test execution schedule is being followed accordingly. Now further, once the execution starts, it is very important for the team to document and com uh, the comparison of the expected and actual result. And a lot of people go wrong during the execution by uh, misunderstanding the expected result and matching it with the actual result and mark it as uh, you know pass or maybe otherwise wrong that is failed so test analyst should bring attention to understanding of these kind of uh, misunderstanding during the logging of the result and we also know these terms as false negative or false positive now when you say false negative it means that the one which was marked as failure a test which was marked as failure was actually not a failure so we call it as false negative whereas false positive means that the test which was uh, marked as correct but it was actually or sorry uh, the one which was incorrect was marked as correct so say uh, you know it's just that other way around uh, when you talk about false negative and false positive quickly re we're revising the same thing once again when you talk about false negative it means that you marked something fail but it was not fail and false positive means it was uh, uh, misclassified as incorrect but the behavior was correct so that's how you deal with false negative and false positive which a test analyst should understand and pay attention to and review the execution logs before it is finalized because there could be possibility we are humans we can go wrong at any point of time someone has to review our execution as well and our estimations or maybe understanding on the execution part as well at the same time as soon as you identify a failure or there is a mismatch between the expected and actual results of course there's a defect. Now this defect has to be properly documented uh, in form of defect reports which uh, has all the necessary details and we have learned about defect management and foundation will be coming in more detail in this uh, certification as well that is later in chapter 4. Also uh, it is important and critical for the test analyst to make sure that the documentation which is being done like the log of execution test uh, reports or the test execution reports or also you should say the defect report are being documented properly because we do have matrices to measure them at how many information were logged during 
creation of a defect report and later you need to monitor that or measure that with help of matrices whether all the mandatory or important fields were mentioned by the tester which would help further to do the root cause analysis or maybe identify the you know main reason behind that so that would be very helpful if you can uh, you know make sure that being a test analyst if the information is being logged correctly and completely on the other side, if you look on to the second part of it, uh, when you talk about execution, there's also a possibility that maybe an external team can get involved with the execution. Probably when you talk about agile methodology, this is what we experience that a business user team or maybe the customer itself can get involved with the uh, execution of the test cases. So that really becomes important that how the confidence, uh, what you have and what the client has on your uh, information and sometimes it might turn out the other way where you say that the uh, external people or external team may not land up uh, finding different defects or only few defects so that doesn't really mean that the there are no defects because they might not be familiar with the way you have to test the product and uh, find out different defects so probably uh, the approach would include uh, biasing stating that they will be able to help you find different defects but at the same time, possibly they may find less defects, so you don't re completely rely on them. So the team has to be skilled in such a way that you find most of the defects before the customer or the users get interacted with it. But generally this happens uh, probably in the acceptance test, not before that, because uh, when it comes to acceptance test, of course the client gets involved with the same. Also, when you talk about what are the specific key areas for a test analyst to consider during the test execution, so we have just quickly highlighted the important points to be taken care during the execution phase is uh, notice and explore irrelevant RDDTs, uh, which generally means that the part of it, uh, when you talk about executions, there might be some irrelevant uh, indicators, which generally means that something fishy is happening and you think that there might be an issue or probably the, this might not be an issue. So when it comes to that, it generally becomes important for the test analyst to make sure that uh, is that a, like an iceberg that just, just the tip is uh, you know visible and there might be a huge scenario behind it or huge issue behind it. So exploring such things deeper, maybe preparing additional test cases could be another uh, piece of work uh, which test analyst has to take care of. Check that the product is not doing what it is not supposed to do. It's like, you know, the vice versa on the positive side. When you look or to the product uh, on the other side, from the negative point of view, also you have to look. So make sure that you prepare positive test cases as well as negative test cases. So negative test cases generally means that when you try with something against the requirements or other than the requirement positivity, you make sure that this doesn't happen. Build a test suite and expect it to grow and change over time. So obviously as the code will evolve, there will be a lot of implementation which will be happening and uh, that will be adding continuously to the existing. So of course your test suites will be continuously being added from time to time. So as the improvement happens, new piece of code is integrated to the existing, your test suites should increment according to the same thing. Take notes for the next testing effort. Of course, a product doesn't end when you release it to the market or to the customer. As the moment you release the product to the market, that day you have decided that you're going to come up with the new version again. So as you test it, of course, uh, you need to determine that what new will be done later in the upcoming version. So you need to set up or create some quick notes that, okay, today we are not considering this as a part of this uh, release, but maybe in the upcoming release we'll be targeting so you can prepare yourself by making some quick notes and be ready for the next version and that would help you to prepare effective test cases as well. Do not expect to read an all manual test cases. That generally means of course you know that the manual test execution is hectic and time consuming so it is important that as you are making sure that you are automating a lot of part it's not necessarily important that it will help you to find all the defects but at the same time uh, Rerunning the test cases should be decided carefully that is it really important to rerun these things or not. Mind the data in the defect tracking tool for additional test cases. When you talk about creating the test cases uh, in terms of like formal way, but what if you're doing it informal way like exploratory testing and so. Now when it comes to exploratory testing, you might have experienced some of the 
oddities or some of the key areas where something different than the expectation was happening. So as we know that exp exploratory really doesn't have test cases. So if you have experienced any such observation, it, we would recommend you that you would like to create some formal test cases and log the defects for such things. So exploratory observations are not just observations. If you think that there's something critical, you properly document a test case, uh, execute it, and log the defect so that it can be uh, later referred for any kind of uh, future reference. Find the defect before regression testing. Of course, regression testing is mainly uh, in terms of maintenance to make sure that the things are still working fine when you add something new to it or create a kind of update, upgrade to the existing system, enhancing the application's uh, uh, amenities and facilities or functionalities. That time, of course, the regression is uh, the key area of regression is to make sure that everything else is still working fine. So do not expect that you will be finding defects during regression because that could be uh, inviting a lot of really rework. So all you be, would like to say is that try to find as many defects as possible before the regression testing because a test regression testing may lead to a lot of rework and that could kill a lot of your time and delay in your deliveries. So that's all from this particular segment team. Uh, we will be coming back with another tutorial soon. So till then, uh, you can keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Should you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address you on the same. So thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.